how the Venetian Las Vegas Hotel plans to reopen. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This video, it's a live stream, so if you're on the live stream, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to hearing what you think, your thoughts, and your questions. We're gonna do questions and answers at the end of this when I'm finished delivering all the content with the question mark right there. That's how you'll know we're in the question and answer section. And uh, this is part of my series about reopening Las Vegas. This is the third one in this series series. Uh, first one is what does Las Vegas look like in general when it would reopen? And a lot of people said, Chris, how do you know this stuff? Where does it come from? Well, the hotels are actually putting out plans about what they're going to do when they reopen. And so that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. The second one I did was all about how the wind plans to reopen. And today, this is going to be about how the Venetian Hotel plans to reopen because the Venetian Hotel, which by the way, is one of my favorite hotels on the Las Vegas Strip, uh, just released a eight-page document titled our Venetian clean commitment. And so today I'm gonna walk through this with you guys uh, and share a little bit what Venetian's gonna look like when they reopen. They're gonna be different than the wind. So it's interesting to see some of the things that are the same and some of the things that are different. Also, I've got some notes to share with you about uh, MGM and what they're thinking for the MGM hotels. Though MGM has not released anything official, they've come out to their uh, elite players and uh, hotel guests with a survey asking questions about what what people think, but it'll telegraph to you a little bit about what the uh, MGM executives are thinking. All right, and so uh, the Venetian, they break down this document and they say uh, their clean commitment, their protocols, things they're doing specific to COVID-19, what they're gonna do in the rooms, how they're gonna keep food safe and how they're gonna keep meetings safe. And uh, so first up, in general, they say uh, they developed their new guidelines and sanitation procedures with an emphasis on the prevention of virus transmission. And I guess uh, like the WINS document was 27 pages. This one's eight pages and it says uh, they've consolidated 800 different initiatives down into this eight page document. And the Venetian's goal is to enhance the safety and minimize risk for our visitors and team members. And by the way, this isn't just about the Venetian hotel. This applies to the Palazzo, uh, the Venetian shops, and also the Venezia tower. Uh, so the first thing they want to let everybody know is that uh, they're going to be using disinfectant products approved by the EPA in their emerging pathogen policy, uh, and they'll be applying dis more disinfectants regularly to their guest suites, public spaces, meeting rooms, and other high-touch areas. So now into the some specific initiatives for COVID-19. First one, thermal screening cameras. This was the first one in the WINS document as well. Uh, the Venetian is going to deploy thermal cameras at every resort entry point, allowing discreet, non-invasive temperature checks on all team members, so all employees and guests. Uh, and if the temperature comes up 100.4 Fahrenheit or over 38 degrees Celsius, uh, then guests and employees will be subject to uh, additional secondary screening. If in that secondary screening, the temperature is still above 100.4 or 38 uh, degrees Celsius, then they will undergo further medical assessment and be directed to appropriate medical care. This is interesting because it's slightly different than the wind because the wind uh, is looking at just 100 degrees. Fahrenheit. Um, and uh, Kirk says, I heard that the Venetian are not going to allow the mimes to touch the invisible laws anymore. That's funny. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, maybe there was something missing in there. But uh, yes, I'm going to miss the mimes. So. Um, all right, so in addition to the thermal screeners, uh, they're also going to uh, provide personnel, personal protective equipment. And the Venetian, a little different than the wind, uh, the Venetian says guests are currently welcome to wear personal face masks and gloves. Uh, but for added safety, uh, the Venetian says masks that obscure the entire face are prohibited, the Venetian will be providing personal face masks for their hotel guests. Uh, in every hotel suite, guests will receive a Venetian clean personal care amenity kit with hand sanitizer, disinfecting wipes, gloves, and a personal face mask. Uh, 
The Venetian is going to have emergency medical technicians on site at all time. They have a team of 25 certified emergency medical technicians that are available 24 hours a day, and approximately one third of those EMT staff will be on site uh, every day. By the way, it's windy today, and so the wind is the wind is blowing down my notes. Let me wah, close that so I get less wind here. All right, uh, physical distancing. You know, some people call it social distancing. People don't like the term social distancing because it seems like we can't be social, so people are calling it physical distancing now. Uh, at the Venetian, team members and guests will be required to practice physical distancing by standing at least six feet from each other while in line, uh, using elevators or moving around the resort. Restaurant tables, slot machines, and other physical layouts uh, have been rearranged to ensure appropriate distancing, complying with or exceeding uh, occupancy limits. They're going to uh, do this at the hotel front desks, guest service desks, to ensure six feet of separation between check-in areas. Uh, and they've also installed uh, transparent plastic barriers at many locations. That plexiglass we've been seeing at supermarkets, uh, that is coming to a casino near you. There is actually a company uh, that has uh, made these plexiglass dividers for the gaming tables. So if you are playing uh, blackjack, you can be separated from your nearest guest by a big uh, plexiglass screen. Now, when people are in line, when they're queuing up, uh, all areas where there are queues, there's going to be lines to mark appropriate uh, physical distancing, including front desks, elevator lobbies, uh, coffee shops, casual dining, and yes, the taxi line which inevitably ends up being uh, really quite long. Uh, EJ Brad says he wants to know about the gondola rules, and uh, definitely we will be talking about the gondola rides. In the elevators, the hotel guest elevators, uh, signs will be placed in every elevator lobby to remind guests of the suggested four guests per elevator, uh, and then primary lobbies will be staffed during peak hours uh, to provide assistance and additional sanitation, such as wiping of buttons. So it sounds like during peak hours, they'll have staff members there to enforce the four-person limit per elevators, uh, and when it's not peak hours, they'll just have a sign and hope that uh, people actually listen. The gondolas in the canals, the passengers per gondola will be capped at four riders, uh, and people in the gondola will not be grouped with any other party. So just one party per a gondola. The gondola pilot will be wearing a face mask while on board uh, to steer the vessel. And gondoliers stationed along the canal will serenade passengers from an appropriate distance. So there will no longer be anyone on the gondola singing to you. Instead, the gondoliers will be on the side of the gondola. I think that's a really interesting change uh, and definitely the gondolas and the gondoliers are some of my favorite parts of the Venetian, making it seem like Venice. The restaurants and bars at the Venetian, uh, they have reduced their seating to allow for appropriate distancing between every table and chair. In the meeting and convention spaces, uh, they've rearranged that for physical distancing. In the swimming pool, everybody always wants to know about the swimming pools. Are those going to be open? And neither the win or the Venetian really telegraphs whether the actual swimming part of it will be open, uh, but uh, they do want to open pool seating. And so uh, the Venetian says the pool seating will be configured for at least six feet of separation between every family or couple. So nice part about that. If you're a couple, you could be together. If you're a family, you could be together. And then they'll have distances between uh, those. Now, uh, what happens if there's a COVID-19 case going on? Well, uh, and actually in this document, it says, we've been asked about our specific procedures. Should we be alerted to a case of COVID-19 at our resort? Hey, everybody wants to know, if you find it, what are you gonna do? What is going to happen? And uh, so in this case, uh, if they're alerted to a suspected case of COVID-19 at the resort, the guests will be directed uh, to appropriate medical care through the on-site emergency medical technicians uh, who are following the directions of local health authorities. What are those directions of local health authorities? Not defined yet. 
uh, and uh, the Venetian will conduct additional cleaning and disinfecting of areas that guest has been to during their visit. Now, what happens if there's a guest in a hotel room suspected of having COVID-19? Well, if there's a confirmed case of a COVID-19 in a hotel room, the guest suite will be removed from service and will undergo a specific cleaning protocol by a licensed third party expert. Who is that or what will they do? The document doesn't say. Uh, but uh, once it's cleaned, the guest suite will uh, not be returned to service until the room is deemed safe by the third party consistent with the guidelines. Uh, okay, so now, uh, other than cleaning a room from COVID, they're doing a lot of procedures to just clean rooms better. And so they said, well, what are they going to do to just clean rooms better in general? Uh, first, they're going to use sprayers. So they're going to spray disinfectant in the room, eventually electrostatic sprayers. And I'm going to talk about electrostatic sprayers in an upcoming video. It's a new trend, Marriott, Hilton, a lot of airlines are looking at it, um, which essentially sprays disinfectant and makes it cling onto surfaces uh, better. Uh, but they're going to use sprayers uh, on high touch areas, um, including hotel lobbies, public uh and public spaces. And uh, what disinfectants are they gonna use? Well, whatever the CDC and the World Health Organization tells them actually work. Um, they're also gonna use these machines in the convention center uh, to disinfect uh, dispatch offices, bell desks, luggage store rooms, belts, bell carts, uh, sidewalks, and drop off pickup areas. The Venetian is investigating the use of ultraviolet lighting uh, to decontaminate select shipments arriving at the receiving docks, mail rooms, and warehouse. Uh, they're also using, uh, they're exploring the UV technology to look at decontaminating retail and hotel equipment, such as bell services, carts, and luggage. Uh, they're going to increase the cleaning in public spaces of things like bell desk, elevator buttons, door handles, public restrooms, suite door locks, electronic kiosks, escalators, stair handrails, casino, cashier counters, gaming machines, gaming tables, dining services, and restaurant menus. Interesting, the uh, win was going to look at like disposable restaurant menus. The Venetian says, well, we're not getting rid of those. We are... Um, we are just going to clean them more. Uh, and then they'll say, in addition, swimming pool surfaces will be treated with an antiviral, antibacterial treatment daily. Uh, and they also talk about deploying hand sanitizer. Hundreds of hand sanitizing stations have been deployed to high traffic areas throughout the resort, uh, including the convention center. Uh, they're located at entrances, reception areas, meeting spaces, and uh, all guests at the hotel in their guest room suite will receive a pocket-sized bottle of hand sanitizer as part of that uh, Venetian personal care amenity kit. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, and Clint Richardson says uh, in those rooms they can start by wiping the TV remote. Absolutely, that's one of the uh, you know grossest places in uh, in the actual room. Uh, and James said uh, if they have COVID-19, they're just throwing the guest out. Um, yeah, pretty much. If they suspect guests of having COVID-19, they are not going to let them in. Uh, the win was pretty similar to that. Uh, and Christine says, uh, yeah, please stop the negative negativity. Things could be worse. He's just here to deliver the info. Uh, yeah, I put down the messenger gun. But I, I think, you know, people are just like, look, Vegas isn't the same. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think these are going to be a forever condition. But I think these are things all designed to, as the document said at the beginning, lower the risk, keep us safe, and focus on things to uh, prevent the spread. All right. So now uh, talking a little bit more about the guest uh, suites. So they actually say they're going to use a wide range of EPA certified disinfectant. And the first item they mentioned that they're going to disinfect more are television remote controls, uh, toilet seats, toilet handles, door and furniture handles, water faucet handles, nightstands, telephones, in-suite control panels, light switches, thermostats, and the flooring. Uh, and in addition, they're going to wash all linen uh, at high temperatures to avoid uh, any possible and viral and bacterial pathogens in the linens. And uh, they're going to look at those electrostatic sprayers that I talked about earlier in guest suites. But it says uh, moving forward, they'll be implemented. So it doesn't sound like they have those right now to do. 
Uh, all right, so on to the meeting and conventions uh, section. Meeting and conventions, uh, the first one, looking at tables. Uh, normally when they would put out like banquet tables and 10 people around them, around a 72 inch table, they are now going to limit that to six people around a 72 inch table. Uh, during peak periods, they are going to station uh, attendance next to escalators to sanitize the handrails of the escalators, you know, because you're supposed to touch that escalator. Uh, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but in every live stream and this live stream too, I always give away some Yellow Productions swag. Uh, today, I'll be giving away a Yellow Productions neck gaiter, you know, with all this virus stuff going around, many places have implemented requirements that we need to cover our face. And so with this, uh, you could cover your face in fashion. So someone who answers a lucky question later will win this if for some reason you don't get to win it well uh, you can buy it on the yellow productions merchandise shop links in the description it's on etsy etsy you could just search uh, for yellow productions as well but this will go to one lucky winner a little later during the live stream uh, all right so in addition to enhanced cleaning and the cleaning of the escalators, they're also going to install more transparent barriers, uh, particularly in the conventions. They suggest people install them in exhibits, conference registration, uh, and service desks. Uh, okay, now a lot of people ask about, uh, you know, buffets and banquets. And so uh, it does say in this document, it says that banquet services have been updated uh, and all food will be served individually plated. Uh, Self-serve buffet style banquet service has been suspended. Uh, beverages and snack items will be provided by an attendant. So no self-service, uh, no self-service food items. All food items served uh, in retail outlets will be individually packaged and served by an attendant, and any food court seating will also have the same social uh, distancing requirements. They are also going to be upgrading their air conditioning systems to install hospital-grade HEPA air filters, and they've uh, adjusted them to maximize the intake and external airflow into the building. Okay, now what about the casinos? Let's talk about the casinos, the gambling areas of the Venetian. In the casinos, uh, on the win uh, video that I did, people asked, Chris, what about the casino chips? And the win said they were investigating things to sanitize the casino chips. The Venetian says they will be disinfecting their casino chips at each table uh, approximately every two hours. And in addition, uh, slot machines, um, the chairs have been rearranged to allow for appropriate distancing, and the table games at the Venetian will have a maximum of three chairs per people under the current uh, guidelines. And in addition, they are going to have over a hundred disinfectant wipes and hand sanitizer stations available through the casinos and related gaming areas. Um, now, in kind of like the miscellaneous section, they mention uh, personnel protective equipment for the employees, saying that uh, more employees will be wearing, wearing masks, more employees will be wearing gloves, uh, particularly the public area attendants and security officers in contact with the guests, and um, they'll be training people on how to dispose the personnel protective equipment, because if you've been watching the news or any of those sorts of things, then you know that like removing the gloves, removing your face mask the wrong way uh, can actually uh, cause you to get sick. Um, Mac Dragster says, what about sanitizing the dice? The Venetian didn't go into it, but as I mentioned, there was an 800 point plan that they summarized uh, in this um, seven page document. So this doesn't go through all of the points. The win actually does talk about sanitizing the dice and talking about all those sorts of things. Uh, so that is how the Venetian is gonna be different. Now I wanna share with you what MGM Hotels is planning to do. Planning's not the right word. What MGM Hotels is thinking about. The MGM executives, they released a survey to their 
uh, top tier frequent gambler program uh, and they asked him a few questions about hmm, if we did this how likely would you be to stay at our hotel or would, would you like this or would you not like this uh, but before I get to those things that MGM is thinking about uh, people always want to know about dates for things so uh, the Venetian is currently uh, not accepting any new reservations at all um, they are uh, canceling all reservations through May. They are currently keeping reservations June and onward. So if you're looking at, hey, what's the first time that maybe I could stay at the Venetian right now? The thinking from the Venetian appears to be June 1st. And when the situation changes, then they'll open up reservations again. Uh, the MGM hotel, kind of a similar situation. MGM uh, has announced um, chain-wide that all MGM resorts and casinos will remain closed through at least June 1st. MGM's gone a step further, and they've canceled all live entertainment through the end of June. So they're at least saying if we did open in June, there would be no live entertainment in June. July might be the earliest time for live entertainment at MGM's. So now the things that they're thinking of, they're thinking at MGM, uh, they're thinking of, well, hey, if we offered free parking, uh, would that bring more people to the hotel? Uh, they said, hey, if we offered free play, would that bring more people to our hotels and casinos? Uh, they're also considering, what if we just limit MGM hotels and casinos to only resort guests? Um, what if we provided medical staff on site? That was something we've seen the Venetian come out and say they're doing. It's something MGM uh, is considering per this survey. Uh, MGM also asked their high-level elites, hey, what about if we did more self-service self food ordering, uh, like made it available to do more ordering via mobile devices and tablets, so we didn't have to stand in line for your food? What about if MGM provided dividers between staff and guests? So Venetians said they're doing it. MGM has said, I don't know. Do you guys think we should? Um, the clean extreme, he says what he really wants is no resort fee and free parking. What is interesting in this list is no resort fee was not one of the things they were considering. Uh, so just an interesting data point. Um, MGM is considering providing uh, masks and gloves for guests, but not requiring them. So the win has said they're going to require face masks for all guests coming in. Uh, MGM looks like, per these questions, that they may provide them, but not require them. Uh, MGM said, well, what about temperature checks? If we did temperature checks, would that help? Uh, if we cleaned our rooms better with antiviral cleaning procedures, would that help? And the last one uh, that MGM said, this is interesting, the last one that MGM said was, what about if they considered an enforcement of a no smoking policy at the casinos? I know this is something a lot of people have asked. They said, Chris, if we have to wear face masks, can we smoke? Do you think no smoking might be a thing? Do you think the COVID situation might be a reason for hotels to enforce no smoking policies? Um, I think it might be. Uh, in Macau, there's no smoking in, the, in any of the casinos in Macau. Uh, so this might be uh, something that we might see. Now, the last uh, noteworthy news note that I want to mention before I go into Q&A uh, is, um, so all this are things that the hotels are saying, but they're not things that have been mandated by the uh, Gaming Control Board or the health organizations yet. Uh, but on Monday, the um, chairwoman of the Nevada Gaming Control Board said one of the things they're looking at is they are considering restricting admissions to the casinos, essentially putting some limit on the number of people that can be inside. Uh, that was something that I um, uh, imagined would happen in the what's going to happen video. Uh, and so now that's actually something that's come out as a statement that the uh, gaming regulators have said they are looking at that is on the top of their list. Uh, and so a number of people, Melissa says she is in for no smoking. Kathy says, great, I love no smoking. Uh, but other people say, you know, I vape and I would stop going to Vegas if they uh, enact no smoking. Uh, yeah, so I don't think we're going to see all hotels go no smoking, but I wouldn't be surprised if some of the bigger strip ones go no smoking, and then I would definitely think that the uh, downtown ones will 
continue smoking. Uh, somebody asked what I'm drinking today. I am drinking an iced tea from in out Burger in the extra large cup because I went through the drive-thru. Um, all right, so now we are going to go on to the Q&A section. If you asked a question before and I didn't get to it, uh, go ahead and ask it uh, again. Uh, put a question mark at the end of it, and I'll get to it. We'll spend about 15 minutes here on Q&A. Uh, and if this was your first time here in the live stream, uh, well, make sure you subscribe, click the bell to turn notifications, because this is just one part of my series about the reopening of Las Vegas. As new news comes out and there's new updates, I'll be doing new live streams to keep you updated on all of the various hotel opening situations and what it looks like. Uh, Xavier says, I'm going to Vegas this weekend. Xavier, let me know how it looks. I am uh, really curious what your eyes on the ground uh, will say. Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman says, oh dear, Vegas is turning into California. Uh, and Mark said, uh, no smoking equals uh, no profit. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Grant Richardson says, given all the new and updated services you've shared, do you think will there, will there be a boom in casino employment to not only fill prior jobs, but the new jobs pertaining to the new services? I think the first thing they're going to do is probably looking at rehiring a lot of people that they've furloughed. And I think demand's going to be down. So I think they're going to be repurposing people. You figure if hotel occupancies are only 10 or 20 percent, what are they going to do with all that housekeeping staff? So I think they're going to look at uh, sorting them all around. Now, assuming that this continues once Vegas gets busy again, then for sure, I think there's a lot more jobs of people that need to clean things, need to space people. Um, so in my, what I think is going to happen in Vegas, I said, we'll see more deployment of automated kiosks. And people said, Chris, automated kiosks take away jobs. I do think there will be a lot more jobs for cleaning and people looking at the thermal cameras. And so I don't think this is going to end up with a uh, net net loss in jobs. Jake McShane asked if I would feel safe going to Vegas soon under these conditions. I wouldn't. Um, you know, I think the safest time to go to Vegas under these conditions is right when it reopens. The reason why? Uh, people haven't had time to get sick. Uh, everything in the hotel is still clean. They're really looking at how to do this, and not many people are going to be there. So actually, and so I, I think that like looking at the safety perspective, like reopening time might be the first. Uh, if you ask me when I'm personally going to go to Vegas, uh, pro probably, pro pro I probably want to see things open up and see what happens with the virus trend. If it goes up, if it goes down, if they do a good job and we see some data that says it's all under control, then sure, that would, that would make me feel safer. Uh, would I feel safe being in a crowded nightclub with a bunch of people? Probably not. Tessie asked if they're going to have a buffet. Uh, they didn't say specifically whether the Venetian buffet will be open or closed, uh, but they said the banquet service wouldn't provide buffet service, so I would not expect the buffets to be open in their first phases. Uh, Clint wants to know, uh, what if we offered free rectal exams at MGM? I don't know. Uh, how would you all feel about that? Um... Let's see. Uh, OC Steve says, so based on the opening stages here in California, do I think Disneyland will reopen this year or 2021? Right. So for those who aren't following California, the governor of California released this like four stage opening plan. And, you know, basically like stage four is opening of, you know, concerts, big events, this and that. Uh, I, I could see Disneyland opening under some like significant limited capacity restrictions at the end of this year, if kind of COVID transmission doesn't have a big resurgence, if we do have another virus uptick in the winter, then we won't see it until 2021. Uh, Abraham asked, what's the best casino I've been to in Vegas? My favorite hotel and casino is the uh, Wynn and the Venetian. Uh, and the Venetian, the Wynn and the Venetian. I kind of put those in the top two. Uh, obviously, those are the first two that have come out to say what they're doing with it. So I think those are the two that have their act together. Uh, Declan asks if I think China is responsible. Uh, well, we certainly know the virus came from China. That's the uh, place where it originated out of Wuhan province. Uh, I will maybe leave the political talk about the motivations for perhaps some other channel. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, Marge says, do I think visitors who go to Las Vegas will stay away with all these restrictions? I think plenty of visitors will stay away with all these restrictions, uh, but I think they do just need to reopen. They need to get people comfortable. They need to get them in there. And if there were no restrictions, I think a whole bunch of other people would stay away. So to me, it makes sense opening with kind of the most, look, we're going to clean everything. We're going to do face masks. We're going to see how this works. I think a lot of this they're doing to prevent liability on their side so people don't say, oh, well, we can't in and we got sick and it's your fault and so we're going to sue you uh, and I also think that um, right the governor of Nevada has not really come out to say eh, casinos you can reopen on this day and so I think what we're seeing is we're seeing these big casinos come out with these policies to try to give the regulation boards and the governor a warm and fuzzy about what they're going to do so that then the regulation boards and the governor say okay we trust that y'all are going to do the right thing uh, Clint asks if I have any idea on the new scheduler plan for the World Series of Poker. I have not uh, heard anything about that. Uh, Nancy says, what if it's hot and they have the temperature scanners? A lot of people have asked that question, and it seems like they would give a lot of false positives, right? If you're out, it's 115 degrees, you go from the sun and you go to the casino, it seems like your temperature is going to pop. Uh, I don't know how they're going to fix that. Maybe that's why they're going to do the secondary screening, and then they do some, like, ear scan, or, or who knows. Um, Clean Extreme says, I want to go back ASAP, uh, but these new rules are holding me back. So there's at least one person uh, here on the live stream who says uh, they're not going to go. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, Eddie says, do I think international travel will be open this fall winter? I, I think we will see country to country specific routes be open could you go everywhere in the world this fall and winter the same way you went before probably not i think we're going to see more things enforced like if you were in this country or in this place that has a high risk of transmission then you can't go to this country and so i think we're going to see a lot more probably electronic type visas come out um, once uh things start flying again uh, OC Steve wants to know when I go to the nightclub if I wear a Yellow Productions track suit. Uh, yeah, or maybe like a Yellow Productions leisure suit, something like that. I, uh, I am not a big nightclub person, per se. Uh, for those of you who watch me a lot, no, I don't particularly love alcohol. And if you don't love to drink alcohol, then nightclubs end up as very boring places. Uh, like, I like to go in and see the nightclub for about 15 minutes. Like, I've been inside Tau, I've been inside Light, I've been inside uh, the one at Caesar's Palace, and I like, oh, let me go explore all the rooms. Uh, I think one of my favorites, just for the overall vibe, is um, Dry's Nightclub. It's on the top of Oh, what's the name of that hotel? It's across from Caesar's Palace. This thing about doing live streams, you know, like things escape you. Uh, but on top of dry is because it's the rooftop of this hotel. It has like amazing strip views up there. So that's probably my favorite just from an overall vibe perspective. Uh, MT says he can't wait for my Resorts World review. I can't wait for my Resorts World review. When Resorts World opens, I will definitely be going back to review Resorts World around opening time. Uh, Justin says, I'm going to Vegas for the first time for my birthday. Is it worth it to rent a car and have freedom to drive around or just avoid it and depend on Uber and Lyft? Uh, it depends what you want to do and you want to see, Justin. If you want to go see some sites that are kind of far afield, like you want to visit the Hoover Dam, you want to visit downtown, um, you want to do hiking, then I think it's great to rent a car. If you're planning just to stay on the strip and just visit the strip, then don't get a car because having a car and parking it and the parking fees at hotels uh, are a hassle. Um, Uh, Victor asks if I think the casinos will have lower rates for booking rooms to attract videos. I think they will, but a lot of people are saying when they look at casino rates, they're still the hotel rates are still high. Somebody said they saw like rooms at Treasure Island in October for $500. That's because there's still a lot of conferences and conventions, and if they haven't canceled, then the room rates for those times are still going to be high. I think the lower rates, you're going to see them once the hotels actually open and they have a date. Um, then I think you'll see uh, like fire sales to be like, ah, oh, come, it's really cheap. Here's a package. And I think you might see them more as like package deals, like come three days for 200 bucks and get food credits and get free parking. 
Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Abraham and a number of people said, oh, new merch uh, for a tracksuit. I need to find a provider for a yellow tracksuit. And a lot of people uh, helped me out and said the location for dries is the Cromwell. Uh, so thank you, Mario and everybody else. Uh, Victor asked, if Taco Zell Gordo in Las Vegas is just as good as San Diego, I believe so. Um, I'll tell you, I like tacos El Gordo. It's not my favorite tacos. I've got another place I like for tacos, uh, but I do think the one in Las Vegas is just as good as San Diego. And I think tacos El Gordo probably is one of the better places in Las Vegas to get a taco. Actually, in my cheapest eats uh, video for Las Vegas that'll be coming out sometime when they reopen, uh, tacos El Gordo is uh, one of my top ones in there. Um, EJ uh, says, if I'll do a Mirage reopening video, we're staying there in July. I will do these as various hotels announce what their plans are. Um, somebody said, Chris, can you do one on the Treasure Island? The Treasure Island is still holding out for that May 15th opening date. That's what their, that's what their website says their goals are. But uh, as we've heard, you know, that's up to the governor of Nevada really to say when they can reopen. Uh, but the Treasure Island has released no more details other than like that's their uh, hope and dream and plan. Um, New York said, what about the rest off the strip outside of the hotel casinos? Do you think shops and restaurants will open with the resorts? I have plans for June. Uh, I think the shop, like I think the shop, like the little shops on, uh, on the strip, I think those will be some of the first to open because you don't have to go in the casino. There's no gambling. Uh, and yeah, I think inside the casino, I don't, I don't think all the restaurants are going to open right at the same time. I think the higher end ones or the more expensive ones will probably take longer to come back. I think you'll see more quick serve offering, prepackaged offerings in the beginning. Um, Nancy asks, uh, can they make us wear face masks because they are very uncomfortable? The Wynn, in their reopening plan, has said uh, all guests at the Wynn must wear face masks. So, yes, they can make you wear face masks. Uh, and, yes, I agree, they are not comfortable for a long time, which means or you have to wear a face covering, which means you might want to get one of these fancy Yellow Productions neck gaiters, which is the giveaway today. So to win this Yellow Productions neck gaiter, you have to answer my question. And my question is... I said that this Venetian document that I was going through in this video uh, was seven pages consolidated from a document that had a lot of initiatives. How many initiatives were in Venetian's original document that they condensed to this document? If you answer that question, I said the number twice on this live stream. So the first person who answers that number correctly, I will ship uh, Yellow Productions Net Gator to you anywhere in the world. And if you don't get to win one, well, uh, you can buy one on the Yellow Productions Etsy shop. Uh, you'll find the link in the description where you go to Etsy and search Yellow Productions, E-T-S-Y. Uh, every purchase uh, gives you a little bit of Yellow Productions swag and totally helps uh, support the channel as well. And the first the first person who said 800 is Kathy. Uh, and uh, so, Kathy, congratulations. You are the winner of the Yellow Productions Neck Gator. I'm going to be extra kind on this live stream because... I'm going to give out two, and the reason why I'm going to give out two is the second person who said 800 was Amy, and because Amy, uh, Amy's icon has her wearing an icon face mask tells me she probably needs some face protection that's a real one. So Amy and Kathy, uh, you two win a Yellow Productions neck gaiter. Uh, send me an email at chris at yellow.net with two W's. Uh, let me know your address where you want to go to or message me on Facebook, and I will get these right out to you. Uh, I'll take a few final questions, and then we'll wrap up here in uh, about five minutes. Uh, Harvey says, do I think Vegas will be busy on reopening? I do not think Vegas will be busy on reopening. Uh, Macau, if we look at them for a comparison, Macau and China, like the Las Vegas of Asia, uh, they closed for two weeks. When they reopened, their visitors, the month they reopened, were down 92%. They would usually get about 3 million visitors a month. They got 250,000 their first month. So I think we'll see pretty similar things in Vegas. Um, 
And uh, Electric Rick says, uh, what does one have to do to increase their luck in Las Vegas? You know, that's a, that's a great question because you want to be lucky so you can win at the slot machines. And I don't have a Vegas answer for you, but I have a Macau answer. So in Macau, at the Wynn Hotel in Macau, one of their shows, for lack of a better term, is called the Tree of Prosperity. And at the Tree of Prosperity in Macau, in the lobby of the Wynn Macau, every hour, this tree opens up from the floor and comes up and spins up. And people who come to the casino throw their money at this tree because basically if you give money to this tree, it will make you luckier to win more at the casino. So if you go to Macau in China, the way to be luckier is to make an offering to the tree of prosperity. Uh, Clean Extreme says there will not be enough tourists to support all the restaurants and casinos right away. It will take time, and folks need to remember this is all opening right into the face of bad recessions. Uh, very well said, Clean Extreme. Um, all right, Brian27 says I should do Planet Hollywood. Uh, when Planet Hollywood releases something interesting to talk about, uh, I will do a Planet Hollywood for sure. Um, and uh, Victor says, thanks for the heads up on Tacos El Gordo. I really love the one in Chula Vista, and so I will make sure not to miss it. Awesome. Uh, Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman asks, do I think they will tighten the slot machines? I think the odds will be just the same as before, which is not very good. Uh, James wants to know, what's the best hotel to use My Vegas chips on? I'll tell you, I eat... Like, I played that game a little bit, but then I never played it enough to accumulate everything to redeem. Uh, I'm curious, though, fellow explorers, if you play the My Vegas game, help a fellow explorer out. Let James know in the comments section uh, where he should use his My Vegas chips. Uh, Tim B wants to know what will be my first video after reopening. Um, probably the one that I've already shot and I'm waiting to release until things are open and you can go eat there, which is, uh, what are the best cheapest eats in Las Vegas? I have a video titled the best cheap eats and people got on my case because in that video I say, well, uh, go check out like Shake Shack and go check out in our burger and people like Chris Shake Shack for 15 bucks. That's not cheap. So in my cheapest eats video, I'm talking about things that are like, under five dollars. Uh, Tacos El Gordo is one of them because you can get a taco for two dollars and fifty cents. Um, Rick Hopper asks if I think September is a good month to visit this year. As as good as any. I mean, if I had to put my crystal ball on, and I'm like, well, the good thing about September is it's still hot. It's after the summer. It's probably before a second resurgence of COVID nineteen. So, okay. Um, Yoshi uh, wants to say hi to Topher. Uh, yes, Yoshi, you can say hi to Topher. How about we say hi? How about we say hi to little Topher right here? Little Topher right here. This one's so cute. Uh, he's got yellow productions embroidered right here, and he's got yellow productions right there, and a little cutout right there to say that. Somebody uh, said, Chris, where can I buy the pandas that you have behind you? You can't. Uh, well, I mean, maybe you could, but probably not these. The pandas that are lovingly behind me here are pandas that were lovingly sent by uh, fellow explorers like you all on the video uh because i lost lost the original toller the original toller the original tofer i can no longer speak anymore which tells me i've come to the point to end this video uh the original tofer was stolen from us in london it's clearly a sad topic which is what makes me not be able to talk and so uh all the great fellow explorers that uh watch this channel so regularly sent uh some of these and handmade ones and uh, i love each and every one of them uh, and they were the inspiration for, right, the new line of swag, the Yellow Productions crew, uh, right, which is, uh, right, you get one of these things, you get some of the merchandise, and you are part of the Yellow Productions crew as well. So with that, I thank all of you for watching today. Uh, and uh, again, if this was your first time here, uh, make sure to subscribe, click the bell, turn notifications, because I'll be doing much more of these reopening videos coming up in the future, just as soon as there's something new to share with all of you. A couple topics I have for upcoming live streams. Uh, I have one that I've written to talk about all the changes in the airline industry for travel. Uh, I think that one's going to be titled something like uh, face masks are the new normal for flying. Uh, and then I also got this 
treat box from Tokyo. There's a subscription company that does these Japanese treats that they mail to your door. Uh, and so I'm going to do like a Japanese snack book bong open q and a session uh eating that uh snack box on the video and so with that i won't say goodbye because i'll see you all in the next live stream